All right, guys, today I'm gonna be monologuing the podcast from uh, my garage gym. So later today, we're gonna be shooting some edge content. And uh, so while we were here, I thought uh, this would be a good time to knock out, you know, this week's podcast. And, and really my I- idea kind of came from, um, I was listening to a uh, Marcus Philly podcast uh, earlier this week and it was titled, Is This the End? And Marcus had taken a, a shoulder injury, I believe, back in February, and, and he's had some bigger injuries throughout his, his training career. And, um, you know, myself, like Marcus, I, you know, a lot of our, our lives and uh, not just our lives, but our work in, in even what we do, like from a programming standpoint, is really tied in and connected to ourselves moving. And while I haven't taken a huge injury like he did, uh, recently, um, we were training through the summer shred and, uh, I think we had a a box jump over workout. I did the summer shred workout. Um, I have a boxing coach and I was working with him and I was up on my toes, dancing around all around barbell, um, just bouncing on my toes for about 45 minutes. And then, uh, I think it was the next day we had some Murph prep running intervals. So it was like four days where I was on my toes. And this is coming off a time where um, I'd kind of taken it easy for about a month. And we, Kate and I had got stem cells, which I feel fantastic from those. Uh, but so I was really excited to get back into training. Um, didn't listen to some signals telling me I probably needed to slow down or at least modify the workout that day. And, and Kate has probably given me, you know, half a dozen I told you so's uh, since then because the night before she said, Brandon, you should probably do your own thing on the barbell side or take a rest day. You look really tired and uh, just the way you're kind of walking around looks funny. In my head, I'm thinking I really want to get around a 21 minute 5K in, uh, at the end of summer shred. So I need to hit these intervals. Well, needless to say, there's no 21 minute 5K and all the running intervals are out after that. Um, two hours afterwards, I actually ran well that day, um, pushed really hard. I think it was a smaller group, but I think I was winning most of the intervals in that class. And uh, about two hours later, my foot really started to bother me. Like, okay, I'm going to take a few days off. A few days turned out I need to take this week off summer shred. And then um, I tried to jog a little bit maybe the week after, and uh, it just was not happening. Um, So in that process, and and I'm talking about this because I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate. We have a lot of driven members, a lot of goal-driven people here. So in this process, I'm thinking, okay, the last month of training that I've done that was leading up to the school has been a waste. And what I was trying to do in the next few weeks is get it back to try and like put it all back together. And the harder I did that, the more I was kind of like running myself into the ground, keeping that foot pissed off, and then uh, also mentally really messing with myself. well, I wasn't in a position like Marcus where I'm like, I think this is the end. It was really bothering me and I even said it out loud. I think having a conversation to Kate, I was like, I, I think I said it, uh, my whole summer plan is ruined because I had this whole plan in my head. I was gonna go through summer shred and then use that as a springboard to do this boxing tournament at the end of the summer. And, uh, And then as this, it kept going, the foot was bothering me and the pain wouldn't go away. And yesterday I went and got it checked out, got it x-rayed, nothing's broken overall, it's okay. I've got had a couple PT appointments and what I just started to notice and what I felt my body was really pulled towards was, uh, and what's always been a phenomenal reset for me is our power hour program at the gym. And so this week I've done our uh, Monday and Wednesday power hour workouts and I'll be in class Friday at noon and then Saturday at 11. And right away, what was really cool and what reframed the whole thing for me really fast was uh, Monday, and this isn't a huge number 
for me personally, like if I'm in a good rhythm of, of doing this. But we did like a sumo rack pull and I, I hit 435 on it and uh, I just stopped because I don't want to like set myself back further. But I hit that with like probably an 8.5 RPE. And then on Wednesday um, with a football grip, I did a 235 bench in there with a similar RPE, maybe closer to a nine on that. I felt more comfortable pushing that a little bit more. And I'm like, these parts of my body are really healthy right now. And these are things I can really improve. And I had this really fast mental switch and I got excited and, and I went from feeling pretty depressed about where I was at with my training to excited again like that. And I'm like, wow, I can take the rest of the summer, really pour myself into this program. Um, it's gonna be a good change of pace. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I haven't done this in a while. Not since 2021 have I like fully dove back into it. And it's gonna be a great reset. Anytime I do this for an extended period of time, for the next year, my CrossFit's better. And on Wednesday, we had a post and it talked about like Babe Ruth, it was, uh, you know, the all-time leader in home runs when he retired, but he was also the all-time leader in strikeouts when he retired. And, you know, you have to be able to use these setbacks and embrace these fumbles and, and find the silver lining. And, and for me, I've had a ton of silver linings when I've had these setbacks. Um, you know, when I was boxing uh, last year, what got me back into that was, at the time, um, a little peck injury was flared up. Throwing punches and doing most things weren't bad, but to be very competitive in CrossFit, um, ring muscle-ups is a skill, at least at, at the level that I've competed at, that I really felt like I needed to have, and that really bothers this injury. But boxing didn't. I was able to get back into that and uh, basically relearn the sport again trained it hard for a, a good six, six to eight months. And it kind of culminated with a fight um, where I was able to win. And, and probably it was one of the funnest training periods. And then uh, one of my favorite sporting achievements that I probably had in a decade. And uh, similar to that, I did power hour, you know, maybe the in 2021. And that culminated in hitting a bunch of PRs front squat PR, a deadlift PR, um, weights and numbers I hadn't touched in six or seven years. You know, my early 30s was the last time I'd hit those numbers. And then closer to 40, I'm, I'm pulling a 500 pound deadlift. So <clears throat> being able to pivot and find your flow in training and not forcing something there that's not there, I think with CrossFitters, um, we get very tied into our metrics uh, and how good we are at CrossFit. And if we're not training to be specifically better at CrossFit at any given time, it can make us feel a little less than or, or bother us a little bit. And the way I've tried to set up our gym and our, our, our training is to be able to, to really find your flow. And, and I think it's actually something we're gonna, we're gonna swap our sign out with, um, that's in our lobby is, is find your flow and, and be able to uh, go between programs, um, set different goals, and not force something that's not there. And, and to be able to find that and comfortably be able to move between those things all within one facility. So whether it's, it's uh, pivoting from all levels CrossFit into power hour, and then back through it, or you know, go from all levels CrossFit to level two to compete at a high level in the open or try and make a semifinal, or actually come back down that ladder. So once you've been at a semifinal le level, you know, feel content to drop back down to those all level classes where we've added three new tracks of programming to the all levels classes where you're still going to do some of those cool fun movements that you've done 
you know, training in that level too, but now in a more sustainable way that might fit with a busier lifestyle or kids or things like that. Um, you know, be able to move into our REV program if, if uh, you know, you feel like you need to just move and, and unload your body with some lighter weight. So, you know, <clears throat> this week it, it just, it was really cool that I was able to kind of like zoom out and then reframe things. And no one could probably see it unless they were talking to me every day. But I was like in a pretty like not good space when I just had this injury that like if I zoom out and I just switch, you know, I just switch gears and I'm lifting heavy, it doesn't bother me at all. But if I'm trying to jump and run and bounce around and box and do all these things, it's really, it, it's screaming at me every day to stop. And as soon as I've given it, you know, a few days of space, I can feel that pain receding quick. And it, it, it just, it's, it's almost like my brain telling me like, it's okay to change and it's okay to, to, uh, to have different goals and to be able to pivot. And, and I just want everyone else to know that, that that's okay too. And, and if your body's telling you to pivot or to switch, that it's okay. And you can still feel really good about challenging your body and moving in a little bit different way. And, uh, and normally what's gonna happen is your body's gonna just drink that up and you're gonna get a lot more out of that than you would have by trying to force something through that, that really wasn't there in the first place. So I hope this helps some people who might be in a similar space or if you find yourself in this space, come back, listen to this podcast, or just shoot me an email, um, brandon at crossfitgreenview.com. And I can always share my story and, and maybe even help you find your, your path if things just feel like they're not gelling for you. I'll catch you guys next week.